guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. I have collected 100 fragments for Rorik Wormbane. I'm going to record this video half in the morning and half at night after I've had a few hours to play test him, fully max him out for you guys. But first, let's go ahead and summon Rorik Wormbane, who is, he looks to be a very cool champion. Is he OP? Is he game changing? I don't know about that. He's a barbarian, obviously, spirit affinity, single target nuker. Let's quickly go over his uh, abilities, his skills, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and gear him out. I'm really excited to put this dude in a uh, retaliation set. I think that I just put a video out two days ago about retaliation and avenging, in case you missed that video. I'm a big fan of those artifact sets, and it's going to be perfect for Rorik Wormbane. So he attacks one enemy two times on his A1. Each hit has a 50% chance when both of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Each each hit will fill this champion's turn meter by 15% if the target is not under stun debuff after the hit. Okay, pretty solid. On the A2, attacks one enemy. 100% chance of decreasing target's turn meter by 75%. There's only a three turn cooldown, not bad. If the skill fully depletes the target's turn meter, also 100% chance of placing a stun debuff on all other enemies for one turn. That's pretty cool. And then check out this A3, guys. Scale Breaker. This has a, by the way, a four point, let me just give you his multipliers. A1 multiplier is going to be a 1.75 attack. A2 multiplier, 3.5 attack. And then A3 is a 4.7 multiplier on it. So uh, good multipliers and really, really good base attack to almost 1700. Here we go. Scale Breaker. Attacks one enemy will ignore 50% of the target's defense. And you can kind of book up the damage. Usually we don't like booking up damage, but booking up a damage on this particular ability might be worthwhile. Certainly the cooldown getting into three turns. But check this out. We'll always use this skill instead of the default skill when counterattacking, and it cannot be blocked by block active skills. Very unique, very, very cool. I love how they're just, you know, I always kind of give them credit where credit is due. Plarium, that is. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? But they have a way of like adding very interesting dynamics to their new champions, keeping things interesting. Even if this guy is not OP and game, uh, you know, changing and breaking, I think he's definitely a unique champion. Counterattacking with that hard hitting A3, which ignores 50% of the target's defense. That's why we're going to put him in Retribution Mastery and in a Retaliation Artifact set. So, so far, people are kind of mixed. Uh, no, not mixed. I guess people kind of like this dude. Uh, let me go ahead and max him out, play test him for a while, and I'll be back with you guys in a few hours or maybe a few seconds for you. All right, guys, we are back. So I'm going to start by stating the obvious here, kind of talking about how his A3 works, right? So the A3 ability, again, it will ignore 50% of the target's defense. It's a hard hitting ability. It does work with counterattack. It does work with retaliation sets, avenging sets, retribution mastery. It does not. And again, this might be quite obvious. It does not work with ally attack. So there it is. He is hitting twice, aka that's his A1. Uh, but with counterattack, if he is attacked, here he will be going in of course uh with the uh every single time with the a3 so needless to say he pairs very very well with champions like valkyrie martyr and skull crown right champions that have that counterattack ability he's going in with that hard hitting a3 and obviously it's going to hit incredibly harder than the two hits from the a1 combined so that's kind of how it works here guys and you can see you can see right on the screen right now he just landed the aoe stun it's really cool what Plarium is trying to do with this dude, right? They're trying to give us a, an arena, clearly a PvP nuker, right? And he is a good, reliable PvP single target nuker. Single target, right? So works well paired with a sleep champion. We'll pair him with Prince Kaimar in today's video in high gold four. Uh, however, in PvE, he's not useless. Like some other uh, of these, you know, hard-hitting single target uh, champions are, which I'm happy about. Now, is he an S-tier champion? No, he's not. He doesn't hit quite hard enough, or he doesn't have that like that last addition to his kit. The A3 on counterattack is really cool, and again, he has that obvious synergy with champions like Valkyrie, as you can see right now inside this run. However, you know, if he had like block revive or something like that, he'd probably be OP, but then I would say, yes, he is a top tier legendary champion. However, I still think he's he's far from worthless, right? He's he's certainly not the worst fragment summon champion they've added even this year into the game. And I think he can help a lot of players out, out there, right? Again, the AoE stun, 
provided you do deplete the turn meter on that A2 is really nice. However, with the AOE stun, let me just show you how I built him and then we'll talk a little bit about how it works. I noticed some things that, you know, I was kind of hoping might be the other way, but I, again, I'll show you guys in just a moment. Let me talk about how to build this champion, right? So you have a bunch of options. You can really put any sets you want on him. I prefer though retaliation, 35% chance to counterattack. And again, that will trigger, that will counterattack with the A3. Again, the very hard hitting scale breaker ability. Uh, Avenging also works. Avenging a bit better for the arena, 45% chance to attack on a critical hit. And uh, highly recommend you guys go with Retribution again. It just makes perfect sense for his kit. 50% chance to counterattack when he loses 25% more of his max HP from a single enemy skill. I also have him here in kind of a PvP build, well, a, a real PvP build with Helm Smasher ability in terms of my tier six mastery option. You guys can kind of see the rest as well. Shield Breaker, very important for the arena. Uh, damage, increases damage inflicted tar tar targets, excuse me, under shield by 25%. Also, Ruthless Ambush, very important for all your arena nukers, guys. Increased damage inflicted by 8% on the first hit on each enemy. And most of the times in the arena, from your nuker, from a good nuker, all it takes is one first hit, right? And you're looking good. So those are the mastery options here, guys. Uh, I also want to mention Savage. Obviously, Savage set is fine for the arena. But think about it, between the Helm Smasher Mastery plus the 50% tar ignore defense anyway, you know, we're ignoring up to 75% of target's defense off this A3 anyway. What I found so far playing around, messing around in an arena for an hour or so with him is most of the time he's killing everybody anyway if you have crit damage on the gauntlets. So I decided again to go with the retribution over, or retaliation, excuse me, over Savage Gear. You guys can make that decision for yourselves as well. Savage works great on him as well. Uh, and then, you know, crit damage, crit rate, whatever, If you depending on what gear you have accessible on your account. So I didn't go over over his, uh, his passive really quickly. Immune to stun, deals 15% more damage on bosses. Really cool, again, they're trying to give him extra viability. And then speed and all battles by 19%, extra viability against bosses, you know. Uh, speed, 19%, great aura if you're lacking another aura lead. So in terms of artifact choices for me, I went with attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet. Attack on the banner, and guys, if I really wanted to land those stuns, I would definitely go with a an accuracy on the banner, especially higher levels of Doom Tower. I was able to get him to 230 accuracy though without putting that accuracy banner on him so i have 167 speed 104 crit rate 235 on the crit damage 6300 on the attack why is the attack so high how'd you do that app Attack on the boots. I figured he's a great option for attack on the boots, especially if you're using him alongside a CC champion, so the Drakes, Miscreated Monster, Prince Kaimar, somebody who's going to stun or CC the enemies, or if you just want to lead off in the A2, right? Meaning, why do I say that? Because attack on his, his boots is great. He already has a ton of attack anyway, 1641, so it scales really well on this champion. And then I figured, hey, a lot of his damage is going to be coming from those counterattacks Anyway, kind of like how I have uh, Dark Elhane, I like putting attack percentage boots on her too, because a lot of her damage is coming from those instant activations off of that Death's Majesty A2 ability, right? So kind of similar with Rorik, I think it's great. And he has a high base speed anyway, like decent for a nuker at 101. So I figured, you know what? Let's try to find some speed where I can find it on the rest of these artifacts. And you can see I got crit, I'm looking for crit rate and speed crit damage, basically. Uh, and you know, I feel like 167, for this champion, speed, it justifies trying him out at a crazy 6,000 uh, attack. Now, of course, guys, if you're using him not just the arena, or if you need him on a go-first team for the arena, sure, put speed boots on him. So enough talking about him here. Let's go ahead and see him in action. Speaking of the arena, let's go ahead and give him a try here. I don't know. Let's just start out against the first team and see how we do. So again, I pair him, pairing him with Prince Kaimar, with Madam Ceres, and with Arbiter, my speed lead. Let's see how we do. I'm not sure if we're going to win. In this speed battle but let's just let's just give it a try right so i'm gonna take it off auto here guys and i just want to show you what each of his abilities look like and what they do and let me make myself a little bit smaller here so you can see the beautiful madam Ceres. all right let's go in with the a2 of kaimar let's go ahead and apply decrease defense decrease attack on all the opponents and let's go ahead and just single target uh valkyrie here and then let's go in so what I, so here's a, an interesting thing. 
I could go in with the A2 and just land this stun on Necret. I'm not sure if we have enough accuracy to do that, but I'm not going to do it because, I mean, look it, we already have two opponents CC'd anyway, so I don't need that. Let's see if we can kill Arbiter with the A3 and how much damage it does. Boom, 208,000 damage. Wow. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> that is a lot of damage. Very impressive. He's gonna come back in here against Raglan, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kill her now. Ready? Boom, boom, boom! I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Okay, he, he, she had a strong ally protect, uh, protect on there. So we still do 50k damage. So this Raglan is built pretty tanky. And Necra almost died there, eating up the rest of the damage. Unfortunately, they pick up... You know, I'm just going to put it on auto now. No, no, no I'm not going to put it on auto. No, I'm not going to. Let's revive. Let's revive Rorik. Oh, this is becoming a good one, guys. It's becoming a good one. All right, let's get the revival. Get the Termier boost. And we're right back in this fight. Get the sleep on. All right, who do we kill here? I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Kind of want to kill... Let's just go in there and kill... Uh, Kill Skullcrown when she has the uh, the unkillable not activated. And then let's go. Okay, this is the A2. So, I'm going to go for it here, guys. The only chance we have is Necret to land the stuns on everybody. Let's see if we can get it. Boom. Uh, and we did land the stun on Arbiter. So, she loses a turn there. Really cool. And he is in... Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's try to get this uh, Swift Parry off. He's in Swift Parry set, so we didn't know that. But you're, you can already see in this one match... You can see how cool he is, dealing 200,000 damage off of that A3. He hasn't counterattacked yet, though. Can he, oh, he is gonna now. Boom! That's the counterattack A3. That's what I'm talking about. That's really nice to have, right? And there were no debuffs applied to the enemy team. That's his A1 going in for around 40, 50K damage off of uh, Arbiter there. And hopefully we can kill them down. This is an interesting team with Raglan and Arbiter, two revivers. But I wanted to kind of show off his kit there. And again, you can see he's doing a lot of damage, right? He's fun to play with. And again, I'm not sitting here. I just want to be very clear. He is not, he's not OP, but he's a more interesting champion than a lot of other single, single target nukers out there in the game, at least in my opinion. Let's go after a different sort of team here. This is kind of a, a, a weird Brogni Sill team. Let's just see how we do. I'm gonna keep it on auto the entire time here. But again, you guys are kind of getting the gist of this. I'm not gonna make the video super, super long, so I'll show you like this in one more arena battle. Then I wanna tackle the final boss with a counterattack team and see how he does there. So I'm going to have to make one before we do that. I'm not sure how he'll do, but I do think against the Doom Tower bosses, he can be useful against, you know, any of them, provided the affinity matchup is there. Uh, you know, as dealing... Look at all these counterattacks, guys, by the way. That's proccing a lot, either Retribution or the Retaliation gear. It'd be proccing even more if we had Avenging. He is going to... Okay. What happened there? Did he... Did he counterattack? Did I miss that? <laughs> Are we gonna win this or are we gonna lose this battle? I'm not sure. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. Silver Drakes is gonna pick up uh, Arbiter. That is Arbiter, right? I forgot who we're even fighting. Yeah, it is, okay. All right, let's see if we can pick up uh, Rorik here. What happened? Why is my revival not up? Oh, I hate when Arbiter goes in with the autos into the A4 when nobody's dead, don't you guys? It might end up costing us this battle here. Okay, we're revived. Let's take this off auto. Let's take this into our own hands, guys. Aw, oh, man. Dead again? <laughs> I think we should have won this. Could have won this a long time ago had it was, uh, not been on, uh, on auto. I should have just went manual here. All right. And that's the problem, right, when it comes down to it. And this is why, sure, everything you just saw is amazing from this champion, right? He's really fun, really cool. However... It's easier just to have a really strong AoE and Nuker if you're just speed farming the arena, which, you know, I'm assuming 95% of you guys are not, you know, trying to push for, you know, new all-time best trophies every single season. I think most of you guys are probably just concerned with, you know, having a good time, you know, uh, farming some Great Hall for the most part. Uh, so let's keep going and let's see if we can make a comeback here, guys. Uh, let's see. We have two asleep. I don't want to wake them up. Certainly not Brogni, not Sill either for that matter. Let's go in with the A1. Okay, now it's your time to shine, man. You're up next, Rorik, I think. Yeah, no. Okay, all right. Oh, man. What happened to your abilities? Okay, let's go in. Sill's gonna pick her back up. 
All right, I'm going to make this the last arena battle because I don't want to be here for 45 minutes, but I have to let you guys know who won, right? Who won this epic battle. All right, let's pick him back up. All he needs is a couple good counterattacks, right? And we're good. That's easier said than done, though. All right, going with the A2, steal a couple buffs there, put everybody to sleep, pick Rorik back up. Now I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take it off. I want to make sure we kill Sil. Sil, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you, Sil. Any of you guys unlock him, by the way, yet? Let me know what you think of this champion. Am I being fair? Am I being too high, too low? Let me know. All right, there's nobody. Okay, if I can land this stun against Brogny, but I can't go in against Brogny, I guess I'm going to do it, but the affinity matchup. We're not going to land the stun, I don't think. Nope, that stinks. That stinks. I don't even know why I bother going in there, uh, but it's okay. We're still alive <laughs> for a second at least. All I need is that A3, man. All right, nothing here from Kaimar. Ah, uh, look at that turn meter, man. Look at that. Oh, he's dead again! This battle is going to be so long, man. All right, all right, all right. We're still in this. We're still in this. I might cut this ba <laughs> battle just for brevity's sake in this video, right? All right, we go in with the, uh, the A2. We, and this is why. Okay, we revive, we boost, everybody's asleep. I think finally this is going to be it here, guys. Let's go in with the A1. Land of Fear on Brogni. Uh, I don't think I have to reset. You know, I'm just going to reset abilities in case he dies. Get the turn meter boost anyway. Here we go. This is the A3 to actually. Arbiter, we can land a stun on Brogni. Here we go. Let's do it. Boom. And stun. See? I guess this is a not bad. I guess I'll keep the battle in. <laughs> It's a long, long five minute, you know, part of the episode here today. You know, it also highlights what he brings to the table. That's his counterattack there. That was his A3, not doing a ton of damage. Let's see if we can kill Sil again. I picked a team with three force affinities, like, or excuse me, three magic affinities like a dum-dum. Uh, but uh, counterattack there on Brogni. He's still doing a ton of damage off those counterattacks against the magic affinity champion, right? So not too bad. And we're going to win the battle. It just took us a while, right? It just took us a while. I had planned on playing like four or five uh, arena matches for you guys in today's video. But uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll call this five minute, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not the most... Uh, you know, uh, proficient with our time. Efficient with our time, excuse me. All right, guys, here we are against Dark Fae, uh, floor 80 of Doom Tower Hard. Let's go ahead and put in, I don't know, let's put in, uh, let, actually, let's use Lysandra, Ninja, Coltar, Rorik, and Royal Guard. This is a fun team. Overall, I think this champion brings a lot more to the table than a normal single, tar single target damage dealer like Faceless or like Errol, for example. Uh, so I think overall, I would grade him a B. Should you max out this champion? Is he worth maxing out? Well, it depends on you, depends on your account, depends on what you need. But if you're struggling on PvE progression, really nice to have that stun on three turn cooldown, turn meter against bosses, uh, a little bit extra damage, damage mitigation against bosses because of that passive as well. So he's bringing enough to the table that I feel like he can help a lot of players out there. I would put him on the same kind of tier level as Brackus the Shifter, you know? Uh, so a single target damage dealer that brings a lot more to the table as well. Uh, I would rank him overall, I guess a B, right? A B if I had to grade this champion. Let me start cycling some A, uh, well, you know, I can go a little bit longer here. I just want to make sure our, our skills are off cooldown before we hit Dark Fae. So I think right there is enough. I should have used the A2, though, of uh, of Coltar. But nice CC and having him and Ninja on the same team, right? I feel for players who are downloading this game without Ninja in a month from now, right? Like, what am I going to do on these guides? Can I never show Ninja again? Or do I just assume most players have him? But if you download this game like a year from now, you'll never get Ninja. And I feel like he is the key to so many bosses. Feel very bad for players who don't have him. Uh, but either way, guys, this rotation of Doom Tower, very, very difficult. How do you guys do? Did any of you beat Doom Tower on normal or on hard? I beat it on hard, but I'm a dirty, dirty uh, pay to win player. I couldn't beat, by the way, the final boss. I tried the final boss with this same team. I had to sub in Lady Kimmy. I didn't want to include another new legendary on this team uh, for today's video. So, you know, I hope that was the right decision. Let's go ahead and go in, try to kill Ninja here. We do. And then let's go in with the turn meter on the, uh, it's nice to have him with that turn meter. It's not a ton, 
But again, having a few champions with turn meter manipulation is going to be important here against the Dark Fey. And of course, having Ninja on your team is going to be incredibly important as well. So here we go. It's going to be Heartseeker landing there on Dark Fey. But really, this team is all about, you know, turn meter ninja, <laughs> basically, right? So overall, I think that he's probably a C plus level champion for PVE content, a C maybe average, and then maybe B plus in the arena. Let me know what you think, guys. Have you unlocked him? Are you planning on going for him? If you are going for it, for him, do you think he's worth building? Do you think he's worth putting your books into? Unfortunately, he is a champion that yeah, it does rely pretty heavily on those legendary books. So guys, let me know what you think of this champion in the comments below. I hope that a lot of you guys enjoy him, and I hope that you enjoyed this video as well. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.